In this video, I'll show you how to calculate the reaction rate. The reaction rate is the measure of how fast reactants are consumed and how fast products are produced. The reaction rates in chemistry are often expressed in the unit of molar per second. And one molar is one mole per liter. Molar is not an SI unit. Neither is this molar per second, but they are commonly used in chemistry. Now let me give you one example. Let's say we have a mixture of H2 and Cl2. The initial concentrations of H2 and Cl2 are 1.00 molar and 2.00 molar. After 1 trillion seconds, that's a long time, if the concentration of H2 becomes 0 0.99 molar, the question is, what's the reaction rate? What are the concentrations of chlorine 2 and HCl after this 1 trillion second period? So first, we need to write out this equation, and we need to balance the equation. Then you can see if one more H2 is consumed, then one more Cl2 is consumed. Two moles HCl are produced. I'm talking about the number of moles. And now remember, the three gases, H2, Cl2, in HCl, they are all gases, and they occupy the same reaction container. Therefore, they have the same volume. So I can also say if this H2 concentration is decreased by one molar, then the concentration of chlorine 2 is also decreased by one molar. The concentration of HCl is increased by 2 molars. Again, this is because the three gases share the same reaction container. They have the same volume. Now let's look at the reaction rate. So within this very long time period, 1 trillion second, uh, this uh, concentration of H2 is dropped from 1 molar to 0 0.99 molar. What's the reaction rate? The reaction rate is defined to be how fast reactants are consumed. So this is how fast H2 is consumed in the unit of molar per second. And over here, this is how fast chlorine 2 is consumed. And over here, this is how fast HCl is produced. So let's first look at the signs. If we look at this one, this is the change of H2 concentration divided by the time period. And this is obviously negative because the concentration of H2 decreases when the reaction proceeds. Therefore, we need to put a negative sign in front to make sure the reaction rate is defined in a way that it's positive. Similarly, we have negative sign here because, again, chlorine 2 is consumed. Therefore, delta chlorine 2 is negative. We need this additional negative sign. However, if we are talking about HCl, this is the product. HCl is produced. The concentration of HCl increases. Therefore, we have this change of HCl as a positive number. Therefore, we don't need a negative sign in front. We do need this one half in front of the change of HCl over this time period. Why? Because when one mole H2 is consumed, two moles of 
HCl are produced. So when the concentration of H2 decreases by one molar, the concentration of HCl increases by two molars. There's a one to two ratio. So if you just write this delta HCl over delta T, this is going to be twice delta H2 over delta T. Therefore, we need to include this one over half in front to make sure this equal signs hold. Now let's look at the reaction rate. It's negative delta H2 over delta T. So this is how fast H2 is consumed. Delta denotes the change. Therefore, we need to use the final concentration of H2 minus the initial concentration of H2. The change is negative 0.01 molar over this entire 1 trillion second period. So you do the math, the result is 10 to the power of negative 14 molar per second. So this is really, really slow. Now, what about the change of the concentration of Cl2? So if you compare this with this, they are exactly the same. What about the change of the concentration of HCl? There's this 1 over half factor in front of the change of HCl concentration. So we need to take care of the coefficient and the signs properly. Again, the change of the concentration of H2 is the same as the concentration change of Cl2. Therefore, we know the change of Cl2 is also negative 0.01 molar. Okay, again, we're talking about molar here and molar here. All right, only because the H2 and CO2 gases are occupying the same reaction container. Therefore, they have the same volume. So, the number of moles of H2 being consumed is equal to the number of moles of CO2 being consumed. And this tells us the decrease of the concentration of CO2 is equal to the decrease of the concentration of H2. Alright, so now we have the change of CO2. It's negative 0.01 molar. Therefore, the final concentration equals the initial concentration plus the change. You plug in the numbers. The initial concentration of CO2 was given to you. That's 2 molars over here. Okay, and then plus the change, negative 0 0.01, the result is 1.99 molar. That's the final concentration of CO2 after this 1 trillion second time period. Now, what about the concentration change of CL HCl? Well, if we look at this equation over here, okay, the change of HCl is negative 2 times the change of H2. So you need to move this to here. So again, the change of HCl is negative 2 times the change of H2. And you plug in the numbers. Well, the change of HCl is positive 0.02 molar because the initial concentration of HCl is 0. So the final concentration is simply 0 plus the change. It's going to be 0.02 molar. All right. Now let's work on a practice problem. In the example problem, H2 and Cl2 are mixed at the room temperature. The reaction is really slow because they don't have enough energy to overcome the reaction barrier. But this time, we're going to mix the same H2 and chlorine 2 and we will ignite the mixture by UV light. So let's watch this video first.
The test tube contains H2 and Cl2. Hi. Today we're going to burn hydrogen and chlorine together. We're going to initiate the reaction that's going to drive this cork all the way across the room with a little bit of ultraviolet light from an LED flashlight that I carry around with my work keys. This is a quartz test tube and it's held in a three jaw clamp, small stand. Got a to carry on your keychain, LED light, and that much light initiates the reaction by splitting up chlorine molecules um, into chlorine atoms so that a free radical chain reaction can take place, which is why this is such a dang fast reaction. And we're also recording it in high speed, 480 frames per second, with a little cheesy there, and uh, we're going to see whether we can actually see the reaction happening in So here we go, we're going to work up uh, from red photons to ultraviolet photons. Red light, no reaction. Yellow, a little more energetic, still no reaction. Green, bright but no reaction. Blue, sometimes works. Ultraviolet. Ooh. Usually it bounces up into the seeds. There it is. Ooh, I found it. All right, let's get back to the documents. So the red light, yellow light, green light, and blue light do not have enough energy to help H2 and chlorine 2 to overcome the energy barrier. But the UV light does provide enough energy for this reaction. And once some H2 and chlorine 2 react and produce HCl and heat, that amount of heat, the reaction heat, will provide enough energy for the remaining H2 and Cl2 to react really fast. All right, so uh, let's look at this numerical example. Uh, same initial concentrations, one molar H2, two molar Cl2. And let's say just after one millisecond, uh, this is my estimate. After the ignition by the UV light, the concentration of H2 becomes just zero. Uh, what's the reaction rate? And what's the concentrations of CO2 and HCl after this uh, one millisecond reaction period? All right, how do we do this calculation? Again, we will use the same equation. The reaction rate is simply the rate of the consumption of H2, the consumption rate of CO2, and the production rate of HCl divided by 2. Again, this is because when one mole H2 is consumed, two moles of HCl is produced. So when the concentration of H2 is decreased by one molar, then the concentration of HCl is decreased by two molars. Uh, it's increased by two molars, I'm sorry. All right, so let's plug in the numbers. What's the change of the concentration of H2? The change is final minus initial. And pay attention to this negative sign. This negative sign guarantees this reaction rate is always positive. 
And then you do the math, we get 1,000 molar per second. That's the reaction rate. And then because of this equation, the change of the concentration of CO2 is equal to the change of the concentration of H2. So we get this delta CO2 is also negative 1 molar. And then the final concentration of CO2 is initial plus the change. The initial concentration is 2 molar. The change is negative 1 molar. Therefore, the final concentration is 1 molar. What about HCl? We look at the change of the concentration of HCl first. It's 2 molar. It's twice of the change of the concentration of H2 because of this coefficient here. What about the negative sign? Again, this HCl is the product. While this H2 is one of the reactants. That's why we need the negative sign here. All right? So when H2 is consumed, HCl is produced. So therefore, it's negative 2 times the change of the concentration of H2 is 2 molar. So in the end, the final concentration of HCl is 2 molar.